You're very welcome to this webinar titled Getting Started To in the Environmental Farming Scheme, Higher Section. My name is Brian Irvine and I will be the chairperson this evening. I've been involved with agri-environment schemes for many years and I'm currently the Senior Biodiversity Technologist at CAFRI, where our team has a role in providing uh, the EFS training. Our presenter tonight will be uh, CAFRI Biodiversity Technologist Robert Beggs. Robert has been involved with agri-environment schemes uh, for many years as an agri-environment advisor and is going to focus on habitat management within the higher scheme and your corresponding aims and commitments. Robert also has a lot of experience reviewing planner submissions to the scheme in recent years. You have been invited by letter and email to tonight's event as you are an EFS Tranche 4 hire participant. So you will have received your agreement in January or February and are already or will be soon starting your grazing programme within the scheme. And no doubt um, you've started or getting prepared to commence your capital works. A very important piece of information is that due to the ongoing uh, pandemic, you now have until the 31st of December 2021 to complete the capital works applied for under the scheme. I would like to thank you for joining the scheme and for some of you for persevering over several years with applications to get in. Uh, society recognises some of the additional value of your habitat land beyond normal agriculture through this scheme. The aim of the event tonight is to provide you with an update on understanding your habitat management plan, your schedule, keeping grazing records, calculating stocking rate limitations, accessing resources and issues that have arisen at higher inspections. We want you to have a successful participation within the scheme, both for your farm business and the valuable habitat land that you manage. So our presenter tonight, uh, Robert, I will hand over to you now. Okay, thank you, Brian. Um, so yeah, just what Brian was saying. So um, uh, this is organized tonight just to help folks that have recently joined the environmental farming scheme. So hopefully by the end of it, really, you'll have a, a better idea of how to access your agreement, um, what your agreement consists of and what your requirements are. Okay, so we make a start. Okay, so what will we cover tonight? Um, the first thing is, so the aim of EFS hire, so what are we trying to do? Um, what does an EFS hire agreement consist of? So we'll run through the various uh, parts that make up your agreement. How to access your agreement? Um, what's in your SSRMP? Now your, your SSRMP, you've, you've probably seen those letters, so that refers to your site-specific remedial management plan, and that is unique to you. Um, what will dear a check if you have an inspection and some common um, non-compliances from previous years um, and then we'll finish off with just a bit on uh, calculating stocking rates so um, that, that's quite important for EFS hire. So first one, uh, the aim of ES, EFS hire, um, fairly straightforward, um, to bring designated sites and priority habitats and species under favourable management. So. Again, fairly straightforward there. So what are priority habitats? So these are semi-natural areas that are valuable to nature um, and they need farmed in a, in a sensitive manner to maintain them. So they cover a wide variety of land types. So um, we can have grasslands, uh, wetlands, woodlands, moorlands or peatlands uh, or coastal areas. So um, EFS, um, splits these into then different habitats. So for example, in woodlands, we could have we could have oak woodland or we could have wet woodland. So we'll refer to some of those later on in the presentation. So um, as we go through the presentation, you'll see some of the habitats mentioned. Um, some of them are mentioned quite frequently in some of the examples. So I thought it would be a good idea just to take a look at two of the most common and to show you what they look like when they're managed um, in a favorable way. So the first one on the left here, uh, we have uh, purple rush grass. So as you can see, this is, is grassland. Um, it has a range of wild plants and flowers growing alongside the grasses. And in EFS, uh, it has to be grazed lightly between May to December and there's no fertilizers permitted. So that's just a, a, a good idea of what purple rush grass looks like when it's managed correctly. On the right-hand side of your screen, um, we have a piece of blanket bog. 
So this is a, a moorland or a peatland habitat. It's found in areas with peat depths that are greater than uh, half a metre. And it'll contain, as you can see there, a range of bog mosses as well as heather. And it's grazed very, very lightly um, March to October. Um, peatlands as well, they have uh, an important role to play just with, with locking up and, and carbon storage as well. Um, so just with, with all these habitats, it's important to remember that well-managed grazing, grazing is, is crucial in maintaining them. So the, the actual the mechanics of it, so what does an agreement consist of? Firstly, you have a commitment schedule. So that's a list of options and capital items that you agreed to complete. Um, fairly straightforward, simple document that sets out your commitments. You then have your, your site-specific remedial management plan or your SSRMP. Uh, this includes a map and it sets out the detailed requirements. Um, thirdly, you have your EFS higher terms and conditions. Um, those are available on the DARA website. And then finally, um, an EFS specialist plan where applicable. Now, for the specialist plan, it's it's likely only a small number will have one of these. So, for most agreement holders, um, your agreement consists of of one, two, and three really. So, your commitment schedule, your SSRMP, and your terms and conditions. So, how do you access your agreement? Um, you need to log in to the Dira Online Services and select EFS, and then EFS Hire Agreement. So you can see the picture on the right here is just a, a snapshot of the, the DERA website. So on the quick link section, you'll see there's there's DERA online services. You would click there and that's your first step of, of gaining access. So once you are in the online services, um, you can view, download or print your commitment schedule or your SSRMP. Um, there's a link to your map, which is very important and you can see your, your terms and conditions. So if you haven't accessed the DERA online system, I really can't emphasize it enough. You should um, make the effort to get access because that's where all of your information is held and you will need to refer to it through the, the lifetime of your agreement. So just a quick look at what a commitment schedule looks like. Uh, we can see here um, we have the, if we take the first line just as an example there, we have the, the habitats, we have field 3A, and um, this field is purple burr grass and rush pasture, so the, the picture that we looked at previously. In the same field 3A, um, this uh, the planner has um, stated that there is 0.23 hectares of rush control to be completed, and then some follow-up rush control. So. It's just it's a, just basically a summary document and it just gives you an idea of, of what you have against each field basically and, and the work that you need to complete. So what is an SSRMP? Uh, this is the site specific remedial management plan and associated map. Um, your EFS planner prepared this, um, should have discussed it and agreed it with you. So you should therefore um, already be aware of your main requirements. Um, within this document, it states your EFF op EFS options and your capital items or, or NPIs as we refer to them um, that you need to complete to bring your land under fair rule management. So bottom line basically lays out everything that you need to do. And then thirdly, um, the detailed information included, uh, or detailed information is included about um, your management requirements that you must follow. So that's um, work that you must complete, and also grazing periods and rates. So it's important to note that your farm may contain a range of habitats, um, each of which you're allowed to graze at different times. Um, it also gives some information on the records you must prepare and retain, and um, some additional advice that, advice that you should follow. So that's really what the, the main points of your SSRMP are. So this is just a quick look at the, the various sections that make it up. So don't be worried about reading the, the detail on these slides. You know, it's, you'll see it whenever you look at your SSRMP. So this is just the first section. So you can see here, um, this uh, it shows management unit number one. Um, it has four fields, so field four, field 10A, 10B and field 11, and they have a total area of 5.57 hectares. 
Um, these four fields have been grouped into one unit as they're grazed in a block. Um, now it's likely in your farm is split into a number of management units. And the reason this has been done is grouping the fields together in this way makes it easier for you to complete the record keeping requirements of the scheme. So following on to the, the next sections that you, you will see whenever you have a look at yours. So uh, there's some site survey information. So um, again, you'll see these, these fields are um, purple moor grass and rush pasture. They total 7.57 hectares. And in this instance, the planner has noted um, an area of concern for heavy rush cover. Um, if we move on down then, so the management plan action. So, um, sorry, I thought it happened. So the work that you need to complete, um, you can see here we have our rush control. So we have primary rush control in year one and then follow up rush control in years two to five. Um, so that's that, that, that's basically basically that. Now you will notice with the rush control, the 2.67 hectares, it's important to note that that is a specific location. So you can't do that in different blocks every year. So that 2.67, um, you'll see it on your map and your planner should have discussed with you where that area is. Uh, at the bottom of this slide, a uh, grazing regime. So this is where the information on grazing is, is held. So we can see here, um, for these three fields. So the site must be maintained by grazing extensively between the 1st of May and the 31st of December at an average stocking rate not exceeding one livestock unit per hectare in each year. And there's no grazing then from the, the 1st of January to the 30th of April, as you would expect. So um, it's very important that you know what the grazing regime is for your different fields. So again, um, don't worry about reading all the detail on this. It's just to give you a, an idea of the layout, really. These are some of the management requirements that are contained in your SSRMP. Um, again, we're still dealing with the purple moor grass and rush pasture fields. So I have highlighted or underlined two here just on a, as an example. So you can see the first one there, no new drainage is permitted. Um, and then moving on down, uh, land improvements such as uh, plowing, cultivation, reseeding, of any nature or liming is not permitted. So that gives you uh, a very detailed record of, of what is and what isn't acceptable in your fields. Um, a further section then uh, covers record keeping. So uh, the records that you need, you need to retain. So you can see in that slide there, um, it mentions, um, so, you record details like uh, date grazing started uh, and finished, uh, the number of livestock involved and the field numbers grazed, as well as the dates of any silage and hay cutting, um, also the date of any rush or scrub control. So it's important that that information is, is retained. So for these records, uh, there is a template that's available on the uh, DEER website. Um, that's for you, to, for you to keep your records. And we would strongly advise that you use that template it's good. It shows you what you need to record and it lays out the information well. Um, we would also encourage you to record the information at the time. Um, it's just much easier than you having to go back six months or a year or whenever you have an inspection to try and recall all that information. So whenever you graze your, your cattle, um, just write down the start and the finish dates and uh, the field that they graze and the livestock type, etc. It's just easier to do it at the time. So um, the final section that you would see in your SSRMP, um, this is just one um, basically uh, concerns tradi traditional native breeds. So we have our moiled cattle here. Um, again, it probably only will impact on a, on a few folks. Um, but importantly, down at the bottom, you'll see there is a, a button that if you click um, will allow you to download and view your your scheme map, uh, which is it is crucial that you do that. So if you were to click on that link. Um, this is just one. Um, this is just one example of, of one field. So um, you can see this field is the again, we're PRG, so this is the purple rush grass. So that's denoted by that. Um, 
So that, that will let you know what the habitat is. And then um, you can see down at the bottom, um, we have a length of SPF. So that's a fence that you have agreed to complete. So it shows you the location of the fence. Uh, we then have another length of fence along this side and GPS that, that denotes that you and the planner have agreed to install uh, two gate posts and a gate at this corner. So shows you what the habitat is and it shows you the additional work that you have agreed to complete. Now for this one here, you might wonder what the, the blue polygon in the middle is. This is actually rush control. Um, so uh, that, that shows you where you need to complete your rush control. So it's just an idea. It, get, it lets you see what the habitat is and where you have to complete the various bits of work that you have agreed to. So going forward, you really need that there um, as you're starting off. So um, understanding uh, grazing and stocking rates. Um, this is, there's a fair bit of detail in this, but um, we should get through it. So um, as mentioned before, the different habitats in EFS have different periods when you're permitted to graze livestock and different requirements in terms of the number of stock that are allowed. So in our example, um, just on this slide, the SSRMP shows for this management unit, you are permitted to graze animals from the uh, 1st of May to the 31st of December at a rate not exceeding one livestock unit per hectare in each year. So that means if we can graze one livestock unit per hectare, and we know there is 7.57 hectares in this block, uh, that, uh, that gives us a, um, basically means that we can have stock totaling up to 7.57 livestock units on this block. So at the bottom of the slide, I have added in just what the common different uh, livestock types equate to in, in livestock units. Um, so for example, you can see there a dairy cow is one livestock unit um, and a yo and lambs are 0.2 livestock units. So just as a, as a rough example, we know um, we can have one livestock unit per hectare. We've got 7.57 hectares. So that's 7.57 uh, livestock units. So we could put on seven dairy cows. Um, so that'll be seven livestock units and that would keep us within our, our stocking rates. Um, we could also, I done a calculation earlier, and I think um, the yo and lambs, so that's 0.2. So we could have um, 37 of those, and that would equate to 7.4 livestock units. Hopefully I'm right in that. And that too would keep you within your, your 7.57 livestock unit um, your limit. Now, in this example, just for simplicity, the, the stock, we're assuming we're on for the full period. Um, now, you, you, you do have flexibility to graze with higher numbers, but in, in that case, you'll only be able to graze for shorter periods. Um, so you must not exceed 7.57 livestock units across the whole, across the whole period. So just some help in terms of, of calculating your stocking rate. So a stocking rate checker tool is uh, available in the EFS section of the DIRA website. Um, it's there to help you calculate how many animals that you can graze and for how long on each of the management units. It takes a few runs um, to get your head around it, but once you have, you'll find it a big help. Um, I think there's also as well, there's a video on the EFS um, or in the EFS section on the DEER website, and it gives you some, just some help on how to use it. Um, within this, the computer calculates um, based on the information that you've put in. So it, it takes a lot of the work out of it. So we'll just take a quick run through the steps of it. Um, we'll not dwell on it too long. So for our management unit that we looked at earlier, um, so for step one, uh, the information that we will put in here, so we have, we'll enter that it's 7.57 uh, hectares. Um, the habitat is PRG and we enter the grazing start and end dates. Uh, we also then give the maximum average stocking rate. So that's one livestock unit per hectare. That's all the information that we need to include uh, for step one. Step two, um, this is where we put our livestock information. So we add in the numbers for the various types of animals that we intend to graze and for how long. So in the first line, for example, um, 
we have included here that we're going to graze 24 beef cows and 24 young cattle that are under one year and we intend to keep them on for 21 days. Um, later on in the year, we intend to bring those stock back again. So the same 24 uh, and the same 24 um, younger animals, and we will keep those on for 21 days as well. So that's that's two two batches of grazing. And so they were on, they've then moved off for a while and they've came back. Uh, later in the year then, um, we have reduced that. So we have 20 cows and uh, 20 younger animals and they're on then for 26 days. So that's three distinct batches of grazing, three grazing times that we have included in this um, in this management unit. Um, so once we do that, um, the computer calculates, um, does all the calculations. And in step four, in this example, it has told us that our stocking rate is okay. So what we have proposed um, in terms of stocking for those those three grazing periods, and the numbers and the types of animals, it's okay. So that, that meets the requirements. Had it not been okay, um, it would have come up here and said that your stocking rate exceeds the requirements. And I think this, like the box actually appears in, in red at that point. So it's it's important to remember that what you're trying to achieve is is grazing at the correct level for the for the habitat that you that you have. So just a, a quick mention of some uh, common non-compliances. So on the left-hand side there, um, claim accurately. So deduct any ineligible features such as um, scrub, um, et cetera, from the area that you claim. So make sure that you're only claiming for the eligible area. Um, there is a how to complete your environmental farming scheme application online guidance book booklet that is um, on the website every year. So you can take a read at it. Um, and then secondly, um, just make sure that um, you measure work completed accurately. So that could be, um, if we think back to that field that we looked at, it could be either of those fences, for example. So ensure that you measure um, and you claim accurately for your work. Um, that also goes for any hedge planting, any any work that you're, you're completing, um, make sure you claim accurately. Second thing is um, amend your claim if needed in a timely fashion. So you can complete an EFS SAF 3 as soon as possible um, or complete it as soon as possible to deduct any work that you haven't completed. So you may have made your claim before all your work was, was completed. Then once you had finished your, your fencing or whatever your work was, you find out that the amount you completed was less than you claimed. So um, you may have had to alter your fence slightly. Um, and in that instance, you can complete a SAF3 form to reduce your claim. So that's just a wee um, photograph of the SAF3 there. Um, you can see it's a fairly it's fairly brief form. Um, you just put your field number in and you give some details as to what, what it is you're reducing. So for example, you could reduce your, your fence. You might, you might have claimed for 200 metres. You could reduce that down to 170 or 180, just depending on just depending on what the, the finished length was. Um, that's available on the website as well. So it's 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 very handy just, just to have that there. Um, a few others just to look out for. Um, so did not read the SSRMP. And then that leads to um, either grazing outside the permitted dates or not adhering to the stocking rates. Um, so just remember, if you have an inspection, the checks are based on your agreement and the, those management requirements um, set out in your SSRMP. So in this example, I've just included the, the, the text for um, the PRGs, where our purple mirror rush grass pasture that we've been looking at. So you can see the grazing regime. So land must be grazed, um, must be maintained by grazing. So you have to graze it. The site must be managed by grazing extensively between the 1st of May and the 31st of December at our, our stocking rate of one livestock unit um, per hectare. And land applications of any of any fertilizers is not permitted. So read your SSRMP and ensure you're, you're sticking to your grazing dates and you're, um, you're adhering to your, your stocking levels. So number four over on our, our right hand side here. Um, so our NPIs don't meet the standards. So NPIs um, are the, the additional works that you have agreed to complete. 
So common things that inspectors would encounter things like incorrect materials. So fence posts that didn't meet the specification, so they, they didn't have a guaranteed minimum life. Um, incorrect sizes, so we could be using the wrong size of, of gate or post. Um, if we've been planting trees um, using the wrong the wrong tree guards. And then finally, just uh, in point C there, in the incorrect location. So, you know, it, it should have been done in field two, um, but it was completed in field three in error. So that's the last thing we want, because we don't want you going to the expense of doing the work and then not getting paid for it because it's in the wrong location or there's a problem with the material or a problem with um, some of the sizes. So just uh, you can see in the bottom as an example there, that is the, um, that's actually the specification for, for fencing. So you can see that it gives the, the distance you can have between posts and the diameter of the strainers, et cetera. All the NPIs have an information sheet that's available on the DERA website. So um, I would have a look at your SSR MP, um, just note down which NPIs that you will be completing and go to the website and either download or print those sheets so that you have that information because um, there's a lot of information in them and it's important that whenever you do the work that it does meet the standard. So the, the fifth issue that inspectors would tend to encounter is insufficient records. So it's essential that these are correct. So in this example here, um, we can see at the, the top here, the first section, um, this shows the work that was completed in this management unit. So it gives the dates, um, the type of work, et cetera. So um, you can see this person has um, put up a stock proof fence. Um, they have added the date that they have completed it and they have given the length. Um, they have also done bits and pieces of, of rush control. Um, again, they've recorded the date and they have given the area that, that they control the rush in. So it's important that you record this information and record it at the time. Um, moving on to the second section. Um, so this is our, our grazing records. Um, so ensure that um, you record your the date the livestock entered, the number and the type of the stock and the date that they left. Um, so whenever you have an inspection, the inspector will check this information to determine basically um, that you have adhered to the, the stock and restrictions for this for this management unit. So that's a quick look at, at what the what the records look like. So again, we would encourage you to um, use the, the template that's available on the website um, because it just shows you what you need to record. Uh, sixth and final um, non-compliance. Uh, so new water trucks placed within 10 meters of a water course. So new water trucks that are funded under EFS must be at least 10 meters away from water courses. So again, we don't want you going to the, the expense um, and the hassle of, of installing a new water truck if it's funder, funded under EFS um, and then not being paid for it because it's not at least 10 meters away from a water course. So um, what does change look like? Um, these are two good pictures. Um, uh, the good examples of, of what good management can deliver and what EFS aims to achieve. Um, so we can see on the left, we have a woodland that was used for cattle feeding. Um, you can see the ring feeder there. And as a result, the ground was heavily poached. So there was there was no plants, there was no flowers on the, on the floor of the woodland. On the right, uh, we have a woodland that has had livestock excluded. And this is, this is allowed a, a wide range of woodland plants and flowers to return. So you can see the difference that, that favorable management can make. Um, the woodland on the right hand side will still need management as EFS continues. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, just finally, um, some contact details. So if you have any issues, um, you know, we've covered quite a bit of stuff there tonight. So if there's any issues coming out of that, um, there's the telephone number or the EFS email address. Um, that you, you can get further assistance on. And that is us. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, Robert Grave. Uh, there's a lot of information there, folks. And I guess the whole message is about communication. 
and as Robert says, there is the email address for specific queries that you will have for, for your own farm. And it's great to get an answer back in writing that you can keep. Um, and, and so we encourage you after any of these sessions, there is always a, an increase in, in the number of communications that the countryside management delivery team, team gets. And that, that's a, a positive thing. Um, folks, I'm going to uh, conclude uh, this evening. Uh, I hope you find the event useful. Uh, a big thank you to yourselves for participating in the EFS scheme. Uh, how you manage your land is important to not only yourself and your own farm, but also to the wider biodiversity of Northern Ireland. Um, I would encourage you um, to complete your online training as soon as possible. I would encourage you to understand your site-specific remedial management plan. Um, Get a copy of all the EFS specifications for the capital items before you do the work. Uh, please put a bit of spade work in and read the requirements and controls and, and further advice. Uh, please measure and claim accurately. Do not assume, and particularly if you're using a, an agent, do not just say to the agent that, that yes, you did it. Uh, it. It is important that you measure what you've done uh, and check because the, the, the original measurement could have would be out in that what you end up fencing is slightly, slightly different, um, which end you go to. Um, so you're claiming this may, as Alan says, and if there's any issues, you're using a SAF 3 to adjust later on. And um, please do your own records and keep them up to date. And please communicate uh, with uh, countryside management delivery by email or phone. So thank you very much once again for attending and for participating in the EFS scheme. Good night.